is time to begin. Hey, this is day 19. It's pretty interesting. We are one day from completing the second leg of a three leg race or marathon or journey or whatever you want to call it. And it's even, it's, I, I will say, I knew it would have fun because, like I said, I was going to make this really, really different. It wasn't going to be like the regular, you know, where you're talking about formulas and stuff because what you really care about is results. This has been really, really fun. And the last leg is going to be a trip, just to let you know. So if you're new, it's Glendon Cameron. Thanks for coming out on this rainy day in Georgia, or hopefully it's not raining where you are. And we're going to rock and roll. Okay, this is how I do my webinars. If you have a question and if it's about something I say, just go ahead and hit your question area and put your question in. And when I come out of the presentation, I'll answer the question. You may change that to the last leg. Don't know about that yet. So what you'll need is a sheet of paper, your iPad, your phone, pen or pencil. Well, if you get your iPad or your phone, you'll know, and a calendar. Because as we get into that last leg, there's going to be more extended tasks and challenges. And uh, I'm, I'm just loving this. I'm really loving this. Uh, we have a lot of people in 30 days to $2,500 that have crossed the $2,500 mark in less than 30 days. So this is an action-based course. Each day hooks into the previous day. And if you do the work, you'll be successful. That's the deal. Also, if you're new, if you want the recorded sessions, which are in 30 days to $2,500 Facebook group, there's a cost, 99 bucks a month or $300 lifetime. You do the math. So if I'm going to let you know how to get to that stuff when I do the presentation, when I finish the presentation. So with that, we're going to kind of change it up a little bit. And I'll tell you why that I, I did the things I did. Now, this is from yesterday. So hopefully some of you did this stuff last night. You know, rather thank you, Leather. And uh, go to your customer list and give someone a great deal. Now, the thing is, if you were here yesterday, you know a great deal isn't so much a discount because you can actually charge more and add value. It's a lot to think about there. There really, really is. So... Just to let you know how the course works, uh, the first leg was kind of like the Karate Kid, wax on, wax on. There was a lot of things to do. And you'll understand why those things were done in this course, well, on this day. And I need your word. I pledge to make myself better today than I was yesterday. Day by day, I will become the hustler I know I can be. I am all in. I believe in programming your mind for success with positive affirmations. Now, I, this is the first time I've used the word positive affirmations, and it's for a reason, because I was waiting on this day to really jump into it. Now we can talk about on day 19, sandbox inner talk. Many people speak of self-talk, inner talk, the inner game, so to speak. And I got really, really disenfranchised with that way of um, doing things. Because what happened with me, I would like, think about it. You know, some people would say the law of attraction or the secret or something like that. And I really, really, it didn't work for me. It did not really work for me. Because I was, I had gold. Now, let me just parse that correctly. When I took the time to write down a goal, and I highly, 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 highly recommend that you find a notebook or something, write your goals down. Years ago, I wrote all kinds of goals down, and I found them, you know, when you're moving, you always find stuff. And I was like, I accomplished so much. So the simple fact of writing something down, it proves the chances of it happening like a thousand percent. Now, the other part of that is the deadline. To get, I'll get to that stuff later. If you've given me your presence for 18 days, then you're ready to move up. Now, let me really talk about that before we go any further. The course was designed for action. 
everything that's here is here for a reason. It took me a long time to put this thing together. I've been working on it for a freaking year. So what I've learned going back to just positive affirmations, they didn't work for me really well as when I became an action-oriented person. But what I found out later was when you have action first, think of action, and it's a good metaphor, as horses, and you think of positive affirmations as the cart. Many people put the cart before the horses. So it's got the positive affirmations. I'm a great person. I'm a wonderful person. I'm going to make all this money. And there's no action behind it because the horses are the action. So this is day 19. And if you've been here for the last 18 days, then you've, you've done all of this action. You've, you've done a lot of tasks. Uh, I saw something on Facebook that made me smile. One of the people that was in this course is selling so much of her product that she doesn't have time to make the other products that she had on her list. She's like, it's a good problem now. She's busy selling. She was one of the, her name's Karen. She was one of the first people to like, because right after we came out of day one, she went on Facebook, because we're Facebook friends, and she just did the task and she made two sales. So the whole thing is, now, if you've been here for 18 days and you've done all the tasks, now you can do the positive affirmations or the law of attraction or, or the secret or whatever you want to call it. Because, see, there's one law that is more powerful than the law of attraction, the secret, these other things. It's called the law of action. It is more powerful than all that other stuff because you can have the law of action that is unorganized and be more successful and get more progress than just sitting there thinking, oh, I've done it. I've done it. So when you hook up the law of action, then you put in the law of attraction and affirmations. And you, you when you put all that the law action, written goals and affirmations, you create an incredibly powerful situation for your life. I mean, I can't tell you some of the stuff that I've been able to do using these techniques. Because the thing is, what I'm giving you is the stuff that I use to build my life. This stuff works for everything. It really does. I mean, if I told you some of the stuff I did, what you'd be like. And I actually have video proof. And that's the thing. Because some of my friends was like, Glendon, no. Pull out the phone. Out their mouths just hit the ground. They couldn't believe it. They were just like, you got to be kidding me. This is very, very powerful. Action, written goals, positive affirmations. It is like the uh, triage of glory, so to speak. Uh, not the triage, but the triad of glory, so to speak. And no, the triangle of glory. I like that. The triangle of glory. If you remember the Bermuda Triangle, well, the triangle of glory. So this is clearly a very, very powerful concept. And let's jump into it. Today is day 19. If you've been here, you've developed some incredibly powerful tools. Because the thing is, if you've followed each day and you did the things, you've developed somewhat of a new habit. Now, will it stick? Because, you know, I don't agree with it takes 30 days to create a new habit. It takes two weeks, three weeks. And the thing is, if you are consistently doing something, it happens faster. Much faster. Uh, I don't even go with Malcolm Glant was 10,000 hours to mastery. It doesn't take that long. If you know, this is something I learned from writing. If you write every day, and I'm talking about two, three thousand words, and you do that for a year, your writing skills will improve more than they did in a decade. And it sticks because when I stop writing and I get back in the groove, I go right back where I was. And it, it's, it's really, really interesting. So by doing this action, doing these tasks, doing these things, you become an action-oriented person. Someone the other day put in the questions that they've accomplished more since they've been doing this course than they than pretty much the last five or six months. So once again, you get the action part down. And I want you to think of action. If you're an artist, you'll understand this. And you're molding clay. Your action is your clay. Many people want to get to the polishing and the carving before they actually had the clay to work with. So you get this action part down 
And even if you make mistakes, that's cool. That's okay. Because as long as you can keep the action going, you'll have the energy and momentum to do whatever you want to do. What kills most people is what's classically called analysis paralysis by analysis. Overthinking or thinking about all the bad things, thinking that a Wookiee's going to come out and <laughs> bitch slap you or something. Yeah, you know, I got this plan, but I'm worried about the Wookiee because I saw him in my dreams. You know, stuff like that. Do you know that 90% of your fears that you have right now are never going to happen? 90%. Or for some people, 95% of their feels never going to happen. But you dwell on them and you think about them and then you create this doom-filled prophecy for your life. Because this is what we're going to talk about with inner talk. You have to be very careful. And for those who are new, I've recommended this book before. It's called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph E. Murray. You can get it on Amazon at very economically. And you'll start to think, because once you get this action thing going on and then you start with the inner game, you won't say stuff, such things as, you know, I never say, oh, God, I suck. Not even as a joke. I never say I'm stupid or no, no, you can't say that stuff because once you understand how this thing works, you will you will just really monitor what you think and what you say, because it's critical. You know, you know, it's like I had to get on to my daughter about some jacked up uh, passwords and stuff because every time that you say these things or type these things, you reinforce the concept in your mind whenever you came up with them. So don't even joke about yourself being like less than stellar unless you have an extremely healthy and robust level of self-esteem. Some people can tell self-depreciating humor and it's just that it's just humor it's a joke you know it's a joke they know it's a joke and it's not really messing with their inner world but for some of you you know if you live a life of lack where there's more misery than happiness where you know if you're what i call a month a weekend person where you spend five days to enjoy a day and a half that's a lot of misery and it's like hey i go to this job i hate I'm dealing with these people I don't like. It's just misery stacked on top of misery. So when something bad happens and your happiness tank isn't full, it doesn't take too much to knock you off your axis. And that's what building a life of design and intent is about. But with these tools of action, you put yourself in a position to be a very powerful and successful person. Action is the missing ingredient. Action is the magic jelly bean. If you was to take a year and for six months everything that you did was an absolute failure complete failure but you go ahead and committed to the process then the next six months you would probably experience more personal growth more emotional growth more financial growth in six months than you did in maybe the last decade because you've groomed yourself to be better because the thing is you cannot be successful and stay the way that you are that is the thing that trips up so many people it's like ah, oh, well you know i'm not really trying to change then you're really not trying to be successful because if the way that you are currently was enough to get you where you want to be you would be there and since you're not you need to change and it's a really really tricky proposition because when you start talking about change people are like oh god you know you're trying to change me some people need an overhaul. If your life isn't what you want, you don't have the people in your life that you want, you don't have the experiences that you want, it goes back to you. Now, you're more action-oriented than you've ever been in your life. You're doing stuff. I have people doing all kind of crazy stuff, like I'm telling you. And some of it doesn't make sense until they get the good benefit. Because it's just like, well, I'll do this. And... Why does he have me doing this? Because I'm here just because I want to make money. And the thing is, you have to understand, money is a byproduct of service to other people. Increase your service, increase your money. Many people are trying to get money with no to little service or, you know, the, the often quoted, I am trying to work smart. No, you're not. You're just a lazy bastard. That's really what it is. Because sometimes you have to work hard to be working smart. So, you got a lot of action. Like, I put this picture here for a reason. Because if, and if for anyone that lifts weights, that's 135 pounds that she has 
on her shoulders. And that's called a front squat. And she's got great technique. You know, she's doing all this. And she probably weighs 135 pounds. So she's squatting body weight, which is a strong thing. Uh, looking at the ease that she's doing this, she could probably do maybe twice that or close to it, which is pretty awesome. Because if you look under her breast, you see a very strong core because there's no buckling, there's no bending. That's power. And then that's what the action part is. It You get that core because the action is the core of everything you do. Thinking, planning, that's great. But action is the cake. Action is the meatloaf. Action is the steak. With that, you've got the meal. But the rest of the stuff, you've just got side items. Now, this is something else I've observed because, you know, many of your Facebook friends, and I may not comment, or I may like or forget to like, but I've noticed that a lot of people have become very more confident. They've become more confident since they've been doing this course. They've become more powerful. They've become uh, more self-assured because if you do all of these exercises, you're going to do something that's going to stun you. You're going to change who you are. Because, see, that's, that's the whole thing. That's the Jedi mind trick of this course. Because I'm trying to change you. Yep, yep, yep. Because people are like, that's not politically correct. You shouldn't try to change people. Everyone should. No. If you see that someone is suffering and you know the only way that they're going to get better, you have to kind of influence or introduce or present some type of change. Because, you know, if they could figure it out on their own, they would have figured it out on their own. Uh, when I came to that stunning conclusion that I needed to change because, you know, when I was a bum, I was living in a boarding house and before that when I was homeless, I thought, you know, the world just had it out for me. I just thought, oh, you know, the world needs to change. So in my arrogant self, self, you know, very entitlement minded, I figured that six point something billion people needed to change what they were doing to suit my janky ass. When I realized that it was going to be much easier to change me, powerful things happened. Oh, yeah, if you're here for the first time, I do this. Uh, this is the first challenge of the day. If you have a business, if you don't have a business, it's going to be a little bit daunting, but you can like sign up and go for the earlier days and I'll teach you how to do this. Call up a customer, call. Yes, you got to call them, so you need their number. If you don't have their number, you got to do it's a two or three step process because you got to get their number and call them up early in the a.m. or tonight and make a killer sale. You may have some inventory that's not moving. You may have something. Just go through your inventory just because you have your list together. You should have your customer list together and just like make someone an incredible offer. Keep it moving. An offer they can't refuse because like I said, this is something that I used to do with other resellers. When we had a bunch of dead inventory, it wasn't horrible, but we had so much of it and we had fresh stuff coming in. Because if you run a booth in a flea market in an antique mall, have you ever noticed that when you go in there and just move shit around, you may not even have to put anything new in there. You just move stuff around, you get sales. That's that part of that uh, universal energy. Because I don't know how many times I had like five booths in antique malls at one point. And just one Saturday, I just went and I moved stuff from one booth to another booth, just moved stuff around, went for lunch, came back, had a thousand dollars waiting on me. It's just like action just brings more action. Inactivity brings more activity, except for the universal order of the world, which is atrophy. You know, things left to their own just fall apart. If you notice like a house that's not lived in, slowly but surely it deteriorates because there's no action, there's no movement, there's nothing going on. So action is super, super critical. So make that sale, let me know what you're selling. Make that money, but don't let that money make you. Yeah, I'm in the goofy mood. Now, this is getting to the self-talk. Now that you are an action-oriented person, you're doing stuff, all of that fake stuff or that faux self-esteem bullshit is now being washed out of you because when someone says, hey, you're a really good person, but you know in your dirty little janky heart that you're not, it's kind of hard to take that. Uh, when I was janky, people would give me compliments. I couldn't take it. I couldn't take the compliment because I didn't feel worthy. It only subconscious level it was always like oh well yeah you know that'll do or you know poor self-esteem is not going to be changed by someone feeding you junk if it's not true it's not true i don't care how many people say oh you're so this this that if on your inside you can't deal with it 
it means nothing. And I'm gonna even tell you, I'm gonna even take it a step further. If you don't really get your inner world together, you can have stunning success. If you're one of those people that didn't have a lot in life, and then all of a sudden you get this stuff and you never kind of settle down with it, because you know, if you go from ashy to classy in 60 seconds, this is how people start doing drugs and drinking because they can't handle the success because they feel unworthy because it happens so fast. Um, like you ever seen a guy or a girl marry someone who's fantastic and just screw it up. They can't handle it because they didn't feel they were worth that person. And they'll tell you all that. That person's doing all this other stuff. Just madness. Because oh, I had a friend that did that. I was just like, why would you do that girl like that? And he's like, what do you mean? It's like, no, she was nice. It was just, you know, the reason you it was you. Oh, man, no. He couldn't deal with it because of his own inner dealings. Uh, there's a classic expression, hurt people hurt people. So if you're dealing with someone that hasn't gotten their inner world together, and they've got all these demons and ghosts and whatever, they're going to hurt you. They're going to hurt you. They're not going to be honest with you. So because they haven't, because their self-talk may be good from the surface, but until that core gets shaped up and, you know, starts lifting weights and, you know, drinking protein, all that positive affirmation on mirrors and books and so it means nothing because this is something else I learned on my journey. I stopped reading self-help books when I became more action oriented because the thing is, there's only so many ways that you can say you need to get off your ass and do something, sunny boy or sunny girl. There's only so many ways to say it. And many people keep looking for that external solution when really the solution is internal. And you start fixing that stuff, you will realize more success. That's why this course has so many things like thank you letters and these things because that's to help you fix that stuff. Because even if you take this course and you use the things and you become successful, if you don't fix that inner stuff, you're going to screw up your success. You're going to give it away, mess it up, piss it away. Because the inner person isn't whole. So now that you're an action person, and when you say, you know, I'm a good person, you feel it because it's like you did something. You know, when you do something, you become something. You know, essentially, I'm going to leave this up for a second, but the voices are authentic now. And, you know, because when you, you tell yourself I'm a good person, but you know you're not. It doesn't ring true, and it's, it creates a level of incongruency. And it's like... Back in the day, Windows, I guess, shoot, Windows 8, because that shit's horrible. I mean, I played around with it recently, and I was just like, you got to be kidding me. This is worse than what they had before. You used to have something called hardware and software incompatibility issues. Like, you'll try to load this software onto your computer, and the computer was like, <laughs> I don't like that shit. That's what happens when you tell yourself this stuff that's not true. You just tell yourself it's not true and it's just going to create problems. So the good news is you can make it true day by day, step by step by making better decisions and being a person of action. Now that we're ready for this, this is something that took me a few years to get to. But I had to learn this. And this is really about building that big life. This is Law 26. I'll read the whole law to you because I got it up. But don't build your kingdom in a thimble. Essentially, you ever seen someone... I'll use two examples. I have black friends. And on their Facebook page, it's everything black. Slavery stuff, uh, police brutality things. That's the total sum of the content of their page. Nothing wrong with that. However, if that's all you think about, that's all you talk about, that's all you do, it's a very, and this is Earl Nightingale word, lugubrious life because you think the world's out to get you. That's what you dwell on because uh, the video I did that's on YouTube now was because of one of those events because I know it's going to sound crazy, but I've actually yelled at the cop. I've actually beat the system because I knew how the system worked. And, you know, if you didn't know, I'm, I'm a black guy. Knowledge and universal law don't really care who uses them. They don't care. So when you go about packing your life in a thimble, that turning these things like, and I'm going to be really distinct and clear here because I don't want to be misunderstood. 
There are many people that their life is their kids. And I think that is a mistake. Because when you have kids, it's a gift and it's you, you get fortunate to have kids. You know, it's a gift. So actually, your the obligation you have is to them. And part of that obligation is not to make them your life because the minute they do something wrong, you're going to be mean to them. The minute that they don't turn out the way that you hope they did, you're going to be disappointed and crushed. And if you ever notice the number of people who get divorced when the kids go to college, they built their lives around the kids. It is a mistake. Now, hear me because I'm, I'm speaking slow. You should put all you can into your kids. However, you should expand the universe. If you know, you you know, like this whole thing with date night. Okay, there's seven days in the week. You live in the house. If let's just say you're putting 80 hours towards your kids, 80, you know, 40 hours towards your job, and then you're putting an hour or two into each other, what you have is sooner or later is gonna come apart. Because it's not it's a garden that's receiving no care, no watering, no fertilizer, nothing. It's going arid. How can it How can it survive? And I see this all the time. And the thing is, society says to be a good parent, that's what you must do. Well, I say fuck society because when you do that stuff, you're building a kingdom in a thimble. Those kids are going to grow up. And if anyone is a parent knows that kids have their own personality, you can have two kids from the same parent. You can have one kid that's an awesome kid. Another one is a total yard bird. Same parents, same love. Parents weren't abusive. Parents didn't do drugs. It just happens. It just happens. And then when they grow up, what are you going to do? It's a dangerous thing to do. Let me get, let me say it really slowly. I'm not saying don't put a lot of love and care into your children. I'm saying put as much care and love into your mate as you do with your kids. Because when you're on a plane and they're doing a the little thing, who do they tell to put the oxygen mask on? If you've got kids, they tell you to put it on first. Because if you're like passed out, you can't save the kid. It's the same principle for your marriage or your relationship. So instead of date night, there should be date nights. And another part of this, and it's a reason that so many parents are stressed out, is because they are scared to discipline their kids. They're scared. It's like, oh, God, you know, if I say no, the world's going to end. So they go ahead and they create this kingdom in the thimble. And when I say a thimble, it's like so much is packed into such a tight and constricted space that the minute something bad happens or something, or a normal event, like they grow up and move on, the thimble is rocked and it knocks over and the kingdom spills out on the floor. Where if you build a universe, and let's just do percentages, say your family's 33 and a third, then you have your business that's 33 and a third, and then you have community service that's 33 and a third. If any one of those is disturbed, you still have your 66%, 67, almost 67% going for you. But if you put 90% in one of those areas, the minute something happens, you're fucked. You're totally fucked. Because when our storage, you know, when I got sick, my partner developed cancer, I saw something. Like, my partner was an awesome person. She had a lot of stuff going for her. You know, she was a community activist. You know, she had a great family. And in the midst of her illness, she found some peace and some stuff. She was able to do some stuff. Because her life wasn't the storage auction business only. You know, she had nieces, nephews. And then I always was a creative person, which helped me with the storage auction business. So when that part of life ended, we both jumped into different pursuits. So, because, you know, and the storage auction business was a heavy, heavy part of my life. But you cannot do that. And that's one of the things I call it dreaming new dreams. And some people think I'm crazy. But if you build an expansive life, you will be able to weather a lot of storms. Like uh, my mother passed recently and everyone's like been walking around like, are you okay? Are you okay? And yeah, because I built, you know, these are the principles that I use to keep myself whole and happy because I was a happy person. I'm living a life of intent and design. So when she passed, you know, also, you know, I actually talked to her the day before she passed and we had a great conversation. And I actually said, I loved you. So 
you know, my sister's freaking out and stuff. But I was in a comfortable place because I dealt with my mom from a position of truth and honesty. And I was ready for her death. And this is something people want to think about. When you got parents, it's going to happen. And you can go ahead and like not think about it and just have your world totally sunk. So I knew it was going to happen. When it happened, I was ready. And I was at peace because I did the proper things. But this comes from living a life of intent and design. When you have that happiness, because, you know, if I was working a job I hated, if I was doing shit I didn't want to do, and I had, like, unhappy relationships all over the place, and then my mom passed, I would probably be a wreck. Because the thing is, your happiness tank is something you should monitor and work on all of the time. You can't, like, well, I'll be happy when I'm fit. No, 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 no. You have to work on that every day. That, that's one of the core principles of intent and design. Now, one of the hardest things to do is to think of yourself other than yourself. And this goes back to the change. This goes back to really, really, really thinking of yourself differently because of the social mantra that there's nothing wrong with you the way that you are. I submit to you, if your life is exactly as you want it, you're right. If it's not, there's plenty wrong with you. I had to make massive changes in the way that I thought, the way that I engaged with other people, the way that I conducted myself to be the person that I am today. If I was still the same yard bird I was in 98, 99 when I was going through all that stuff, I wouldn't be before you. I would be 400 pounds, probably, pissed off, high blood pressure, diabetes, miserable person, miserable person. And when I started to write in 2009, that was a pivotal decision. So I thought of myself as a writer. I never wrote a book before. And, you know, and people laughed. I'm telling you, that there was a lot of dissension with that decision. And it was like, I thought I can do it. And then the most important thing, going back to what I discussed earlier, I put the action behind the thoughts. Well, in front of the thoughts, the action led. I sat at the desk every day, got headaches, played games, like I can't use the bathroom to I type 500 words, all that kind of stuff. You just, just keep pushing, pushing, and pushing. And same thing with the videos. I actually hated making YouTube videos in the beginning, but I knew I had to do it. I had to change. And, you know, and this is the thing. I'm going to have to change some more. It's a never ending process. You don't, and that's why I never use the word, I'm grown. Many people like these, I'm a grown person. I don't, to me, grown is dead. If you're grown, you're final. You're done. There's no more. I consider myself a happy adult that never grew up. <laughs> That's what I am. And I like that because it leaves room for exploration. Because when you get grown, like, if I was grown, I would have a house. Um, now, if I was grown, I would be living my life a certain way. Since I am not grown... And I'm continuing to evolve as a kid. I leave a lot of stuff open in my life because I was 42 when I started this stuff. For a lot of people, that's like you start winding it down. You kind of kick back. You want to get that job. I crock it up in a whole nother level. I did something completely different I never did before. You can do it too. You can do it too. If you're 50, you can do what I did. If you're 60, you can do what I did. As long as your health, once again, if you look at my video on YouTube talking about mental money, as long as you're you've got your health and your mind is good, you can do this at any age. A lot of people don't realize that. They really, really don't. So think of yourself differently. Think of yourself as who you want to be versus who you are if you're unhappy. Let me put that disclaimer. There's some people who've done the work. There's some people who've done the same thing I have, and they're in the position where they are happy with themselves. They have the life they want. You're good. But even you will still have to change a little bit. It's growing in the future. <laughs> if you haven't seen the bull, I love this bull. This bull is my BFF. This is your other task for today. Write down your dream life. Don't hold back. If you want to be on the beach of Bora Bora or Tahiti every day, write it down. Now, this is the rub. If what you're writing down scares you, you're doing it right. If it's like, yeah, 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 you're not really putting your heart's desire. Because the thing is, 
Also, I'm going to add something that's not on the screen. I want you to imagine your life and if you the way you want it to be. If you're having mental hardware crashes, like there's this exercise that I put out and people were having problems with it because they thought it was crazy. I want you to picture yourself on a very tall diving board. You know, you can picture yourself all trimmed. You can put a six pack on yourself. You know, it's an imaginary thing. You can do that. And what you're going to do is jump off of that diving board into the water and you're going to land perfectly. You're going to land straight with your hands together, palms, palms out to break the water. Do that in your mind a few times. I took me a few weeks to get that shit down. And that just lets you know that your mind is programmed for failure. The subconscious mind has been programmed for failure because that is a mental exercise that's happening in your inner sandbox. And if you're having problems with it or you're having problems, imagine your life grand then you've got to start working on the mental program that you have because the mental programming you have is not going to help you get to what you want. It's going to create even more angst and anxiety. So that's your task. Write down your dream life. Think, I mean, you know, whatever it is, if, you know, your dream life is uh, having a tulip farm because everyone's dream life is not the same. Everyone doesn't have this fascination where, you know, I got to have a mansion and a Ferrari and a French maid. That's not everybody's dream. For some people, Right now, because their life is so miserable, if their house was paid off and their car was paid off and they could stay at home every day, that's their dream life. That's their dream life. So everyone's dream is totally different because, you know, my dream life for some people would be pretty boring. I'm a homebody. You know, when it snowed here in Atlanta, <laughs> it was no problem to me. I'm home all the time anyway. So my dream life was, number one, to control my time. Now, and the dream life will change because one of the reasons I think I got in the storage auction business was... Because I had this dream, so to speak, of being able to get stuff cheap. And I think the path was I set it for myself because I used to look at the Sears and Roebuck catalog and would look at the JCPenney catalog. And they used to call it a dream book. Now all this stuff and I read all the stuff that I wanted. And incidentally, a lot of stuff that I wanted, I got later in life. But... I figured since I was poor that if I can get it at wholesale, then I can get more of it, which led me to go into business. It's kind of funny when I think about it. But that was one dream life, which got me in the store trucking business. And the next dream life is, you know, what I'm doing now is to have a lot of control over my time. And I made the price with the universe to say, hey, you know, um, if I don't make a lot of money, that's cool. And the universe is like, ah, right, we're going to give you a little loot. <laughs> You know, we're going to give you a little loot. And you won't have to suck on uh, Vienna sausages or nothing like that. So you, your dream life can be whatever you want it to be. And also, keep it to yourself. There's this thing online with showing everyone what you're doing as an accountability measure. I think after a week or two, when you've had time to digest it, if you want to share it with someone, that's fine. But realize that your inner longings and stuff are very fragile. And it doesn't take much to break them up. I mean, it can be something like, mm-hmm, and you messed up. <laughs> you messed up. So keep that to yourself until your dreams get a little, get their teeth and bones to start growing a little bit, you know? Now, until you know how you want to die, it's going to be hard to know how you want to live. Now, I know it seems a little gruesome. These are the little girls that died in the Birmingham bombing of the church. And the reason I have them is... When you say Birmingham bombing little girls, everyone in around the world knows what happened. You know, to a degree, due to a very gruesome event, they're immortal. But how they're remembered as innocent little girls. So how you want to die, what you want to be known for, because actually we had people write their obituaries in this. And for some people, it was a fun exercise. For some people, it was an anxiety producing event. But when you really think about how you want to leave, you can reverse engineer and start doing those things and start building it because I worked in a hospital and I'm not comfortable with death, but I've seen it a lot. You know, I've had patients. Now, I wasn't doing surgery. Now, don't, don't even think like that. But I'm like talking to someone and I look over and the respirator is like off and they stop breathing. I'm just like talking to this person and like I look, they're gone. And I remember one time I was like, Mr. Johnson, you didn't tell me you were leaving. And the nurse is looking at me like I'm crazy. I was like, he was just talking to me. He told me a dirty joke. Was that it? Tell me a dirty joke and then like depart this earth, you know? So you, I'm a little bit, like I said, not comfortable, but I, I can accept it. And it doesn't weird me out because I used to go look at the 
generous people. And like, if you're not an organ donor, become an organ donor because your eyes can help 30 people. And I'm going to go watch the harvesting of the organs and stuff. And, you know, weird fact, your eyeballs are as big as they're going to get. When you're born, that's the same size your eyeballs are now, unless you have some kind of disease. So your eye, that's why your head's so big, because they don't grow. And it just was really, really interesting just to, you know, hear the people who was harvesting organs and just saying, like, what you can do for other people. Because the thing is, you go. Well, you don't need it. Donate it. So think about how you want to be remembered. And you work on that. If you want to be remembered as a good person, start being a good person now. If you want to be remembered as um, this outstanding person or, uh, you know, an author, start writing books now. If you want, I mean, start now. Now, this is a little bit about me. Um, that's not me. But, you know, he's got that wonderful brown skin. So some people would be confused. But I started out life as an artist and I will end it this way. And this is one of the things because when I first started on YouTube, there was so much pushback like, yeah, he wants to write books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just, he can't do this. The truth of the matter is, I love art. I mean, when I was in high school, we got to go on these great trips. We went to go to the opera, the symphony, because it was part of the curriculum of the art class because creativity knows no bounds. And what he's doing, that's like the things I'm going to get started on probably this year or next year is start painting again and sculpting again because that stuff's fun. It's just fun. So that's how, that's the, that's the end plan because, you know, the, the renaissance man, so to speak, or writer, videographer, paint, draw. I want to, you know, do all that stuff. So just like I can make that decision, so can you. You know, I started off as an artist because I loved it. And most people start off as artists, been doodling, being creative. And whatever you want to end up in, start now, start now, start now. Don't wait until that mythical, majestical moment called when the time is right. Don't wait for that. Because if I did not make the decision in 2009, July 17th, 2009, around 3.30 p.m., that's like, I'm going to write this book. Made a firm decision, sat down, wrote down the goals, wrote out the chapters, and went to work that day. It wasn't easy. Made a lot of mistakes, made some enemies, made a lot of friends, but it was worth it. So whatever you want to do, really, really start. Because see, now that you're here at day 18, you have a lot of resiliency if you've done the task, if you went through the exercises. You now know you can do it, whereas before you didn't really know. You was like, maybe I can do it, but now you know. The power of choice is amazing. Many people look at an empty road with many arrows as a paralyzing event. It's really not. You got to start getting in touch with you, whoever you may be. You know, you might be the Wookiee. You know, you might be a vampire. You might even be a werewolf, whoever you are. Be the best Wookiee, vampire, whatever you can. And just really go out there and define your life. Because, see, a life of design and intent is not something that drops in your lap. It's something that you consciously choose and we have an educational system that teaches people not to think it teaches them to react or to be part of something so when you're able to uh, capable of independent thought it's a little easier to uh, design your life but if you have to regurgitate that then that's one of the extra steps you'll have to create for you to be that person living your life of design and intent but it's possible. Look at the blank slate as an opportunity to create versus like, I don't have shit, G. You know, half full, half empty. You know, it's really how you look at it. Now, the power of choice is design. You can pick, and many people are paralyzed you know, by picking. It's just like, I don't know what to do. You know, like that guy in the Italian job because he didn't have an imagination. He adopted their dreams and stuff. That is so incredibly common. And other people are like, well, this is good enough for Susie. It's good enough for me. It's good enough for John Boyce. It's good enough for me. Whereas really sitting down and going, hmm, I like red shoes. You know, the red shoes look good on me. And you go out and you experiment. And you you Because the thing is, anyone can dress well. Like, you know, I look like a bum all the time because I don't really care. But when I have to go out and do something where I have to be presentable, people are always like, 
Wow. You know, it, 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 it's, it's a running joke in my circle of friends. But anyone can dress well if you go out and get what works for you. Everyone can't wear everything. All fashions aren't for everyone. That goes for male and female. Dress for the way that you're shaped. Dress for how your face is like glasses. You know, I mean, there's so much that goes into this. If you just do it and you don't have to spin a grip, you just have to pay attention to who you are. And you can be looking like a man. Number one tip, get your shit fitted. I'm talking about you can get stuff off the rack. If you get it fitted where it fits you well, that makes you look like a million bucks. That simple thing right there. Also, before I go to the questions, the glue of choice is intent. How you intend to live your life. How you intend to be that person who's going to have this wonderful, awesome life. It's your intent. Do you intend to do good or do you intend to do hard? I talk a lot of stuff, but I really control myself on, you know, trying to be evil, so to speak. That's the reason I don't go after people with videos anymore, because I did it. And I was just like, this is hurting me more than it's hurting them, and it's stupid. So as you build your life of design intent, what's your intent? Really think about what's your intent. Is your intent to be immortal? Is your intent to leave your footprint on the world? Is your intent, what is your intent? Because everyone has different intent, just like everyone has a different design, everyone has different dreams. Everyone has different intent. When you really think about that, that's a beautiful thing. Now, this is something else that I run into because many people think it's too late. Uh, you're, you've, you've gone too far. I actually know someone who did something to her transformation. Uh, lost 120 pounds and did not do the bariatric surgery. But it took her three years. She lost most of the weight the first year, second year, and, and then last year was like the big struggle. But she kept at it. She kept you know trying different stuff. And she went from, I think she went from three something to 130. And because she did it slowly, she didn't get the saggy skin and all this other stuff. And she worked out with weights and she, you know, it was a process. But the thing is, I, just my opinion, you know, when you lose it like that, over time, I don't think you're going to get it back because so much work that went into it and you've changed your lifestyle. So understand, it is never too late to change. All right. So... Yeah, I told you, like, as we get in here, these are going to get a little longer. So let me go to the questions. Uh, Dwayne, yep, having some accomplishments create positive affirmations. The post office delivered a giant stack of priority boxes, not because I think they'll match the drapes, but because I would be shipping a ton of stuff to people who want what I've been hoarding. <laughs> Dude, I am. I am not as far along as many others, but my day is spent nonstop thinking what would G do what would Glenda do I'm an old dog so new trips come hard but I'll bark up every damn tree until I get to the right one that is funny uh Dwayne overthinking is my personal boat anchor over playing is a personal lead shoes but just a simple thing of limiting myself to my to-do list and the six things that caused me to pare down the planning and think after I'm done with the work yeah because you know that's why I said with uh, the power of six because when you have these long, long to-do lists, they're overwhelming. Karen is here. I love this. This is awesome. I have had more soap sales so far in March than I did in December, and it's only the sixth. I saw you what you were posting. You were just like, I'm selling, you slinging that soap, girl. Other way. All right. My positive thought for this moment. I want the weightlifting chick's phone number. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sandbox in the top. Calling the customer for so special hours they can't refuse. I do service work. What about offering a free service call in exchange for five more calls this month? Hey, whatever you want to do. It's your business. I think it's a great idea. Uh, Chad, I enjoy what you say. Just wish you did not swear. It distracts from your spirit. That's me. That, I'll talk about that. I've been cussing since 2009. And one of the reasons, it's me. You know, and a lot of people don't like it. My mother didn't like it. and But it's me. And when you have the courage to be yourself, the people who come into your life really are appropriate for you. 
And when you're not yourself, you get all kind of junk. You get all kind of crazy junk. But thanks for being here. Uh, Jasmine, when you say your mind is programmed to fail, do you mean in essence, or has it been programmed in such a way by society, the media? All of the above. The media will make you hate yourself if you don't have a strong sense of self-esteem. The media has women who are, in my opinion, like attractive and healthy, thinking there's something wrong with them. Uh, the media have men turning into little bitches because they think they need to be super soft and over, uh, feminine to some degree. Otherwise, they're actually being hateful. I mean, I limit my TV watching time and I do a lot of reading because when you're bombarded 24-7 with all these negative messages and you're not putting in healthy mental energy, it, it's going to mess you up. It really will. Uh, Dwayne, the reverse engineering tip is a good one for a darn near every solution. How do you want it? To do Z, you need Y in place. To have Y in place, you need X. That's a hard concept for me to grasp, but, grasp, but it does work. Because the thing is, we're taught that if we overthink stuff, we're smart. We're not taught that if we go out and make mistakes and fuck up, that we are smart. We're taught that we messed up and we shouldn't do that. Overthinking, playing it safe, makes you look smart and more socially acceptable than going out and making a mess of stuff. But when you go out and make a mess of stuff, you actually learn so much. Uh, Greg B. What's up, G? How many minutes do you meditate per day? Uh, my meditation comes in cycles. Usually when I am stressed or I got a lot of stuff going on, that's typically when I meditate. I'm going to meditate every day. Edward, I am presently learning Spanish, not trying to learn Spanish. I spoke Spanish with three people today. <laughs> Overcome the fear of mistakes allows you to talk the language. And as you know, this relates to other areas as well. True that. Uh, Greg, no question. Just warehouse video, warehouse video. <laughs> it's coming, it's coming. Uh, Tony Marshall, what is the power of six? It's a productivity tool. It's in day eight, I believe. Uh, Deb, I think I need to think more positive. Just doing the five, five tasks a day makes me feel good. That helps. You get a boost from accomplishment. That's why I am not with this false self-esteem. Like every little kid getting a trophy, some of those little kids never got off the bench. I mean, that's not helping them long term. Actually, it's crippling. Uh, Jonathan, hey, Glendon, $2,800 so far from garage sales every weekend. I'm keeping the hustler's mindset. As another person passed the $2,500 barrier. Uh, Chad, what's the title of the book? The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph E. Murray. Uh, Dwayne, the best thing you can do is cancel cable. Cancel the newspaper, turn the radio off, and live. Living does not require some shit hidden in the box telling you to be afraid. I like that quote. I love that quote. Uh, David, sandbox inner talk. By focusing on action, I'm taking away from my inner talk, telling myself how awesome I am. Thanks, G. I found a new few. I found a few new skills in the past 18 days that opened up more opportunities for making more money than I ever dreamed of. So this is the thing with action. You may start your process trying to do one thing, and as you're going down the road, and you'll find out that doesn't work. But as you're on the road, you see other things that do work. It was never my intention to write pimping Craigslist. That that wasn't even on the map. It was to write a storage auction book, pimp the hell out of that, and then work, start working on the great American novel. I got delayed by three years because as I was on the road, all these opportunities kept popping up. The opportunity for the reality show, uh, the opportunity, and you know, the reality show didn't work out on the front end, but on the back end, I made a lot of money being a consultant. So just being on the road, being out there. You can see stuff you're not going to see sitting on the bench. Uh, David, I have a problem with everybody wanting to get in my business. Family members, what would you do, G? Uh, I can answer this with a great deal of authority. I kept my business to myself. I have a cousin, Kathy. Nobody knows what she's doing. She tells you only what she wants you to know. And I just looked at her, and we had lunch one day, and I would go over her place, and we talk, and she just said, you know the family. And I just learned to keep all my business to myself. Um, my mom didn't even know I was homeless until like recently. She had no clue. Because I feel that if you're going to keep good news, you should keep bad news as well. And 
you just have to learn how to be able to speak a lot and really say nothing. The storage auction business gave me so many things to talk about. I could go to a party and one person called me on it. You've been here talking to everybody and everything. And she said, I just figured something out. I don't know nothing about you. I don't even know your name. <laughs> because when you're dealing with people who are not progressing, their negative energy is going to make them, make them hate you. You're just going to have to be civil, decent, and don't tell them. As long as you're not committing any crime or, you know, killing rabbits or something, I don't see what the problem is. Uh, Deb Williams. Deb, I started living when I canceled cable too. You start thinking instead of someone telling you a thing. My TV hasn't been on in like two days. I use, I'm a Netflix kid because uh, I've started watching Ameri the American Horror Show. Oh my God, that stuff's addictive. But it, it, it's called programming for a reason. Someone had actually said that and it was really true. Uh, smooth, a good habit to the middle is like sp spray craft. Say a lot and reveal nothing. Yeah, 48 Laws of Power. House of Cards, I'm waiting. I haven't watched that yet. Uh, Dwayne, yep, broadcasting your personal business is a good way to paint a target on your ass. Yes, it is. If you enjoy being shot at and brag all day, if you want to win, just do and let folks wonder what the hell you did while you live large. I, I will agree with that 100%. Uh, Hector, I've been taking action every day. At the beginning, I was overwhelmed by the amount of work I had to do. Every day I do something different, I get more clarity in my life. Now, someone posted an article in Hustle University today, and it, it was so eerily parallel. Because if you've been here the 18 days, you know I use a lot of weightlifting pictures and stuff. Because the process of lifting weights is a system. And it spoke to this in the article. It's like, every day you go to the gym, it's not going to be a good day. You're going to go, you're going to have days where you can't lift what you lifted last week. It's going to be crappy, but see the, because it was talking about creativity. Instead of waiting for creativity to show up, you just keep going to work every day, every day. And then you eventually get where you want to, because I went out and I read these blogs. There's all this wonderful stuff on the internet. And I was watching this one guy's blog and just the information on this blog taught me how to go from squatting like to something to damn near yeah, 500 pounds in seven months every week. And the thing is, I was working out every day. I was I was squatting three to four times a week, which is the converse of what you hear because it's like you squat once a week. I got stronger. My knee pain went away. I started doing overhead presses. My core tightened up. And it goes back to the right information because conventional thinking, because if you get into weightlifting circles, there's a whole different level of information but if you read you know watch youtube and people are like hey you know because the thing is i got better abs from doing planks and overhead presses than i ever did from crunching because they hit everything on a deeper level so another thing with all this action is and you're many of you who've been here since 18 days you've learned you can do more now than you could when you started because you've become more efficient you've created systems and processes that help you do these things and it's like when you start lifting weights, those first few weeks are, oh, they're rough because you're like, you're sore. Then later on, what was hard to you becomes easy if you stick with it. Uh, Jonathan, Roku player is the best. It forces you to program the TV as opposite to the TV program you. I watch CNBC, Wall Street Journal, and many business documentaries. Not too bad for less than the $100 fee. Cool. All right. Uh, let's see. I did say I was going to read this because uh, the cause I've got a lot of this stuff written. I just haven't done the audio on it yet. But this is what I'm talking about. This is Law 26. Don't make your kingdom in a thimble. When you claim a battleground that is small and of a little consequence to the world, once it's gone, you have much of nothing. To apply your best efforts on a tiny plot of ground is to expend your worth into virtually nothing. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. If you're working hard and not realizing results, you may be doing this. Build your kingdom Far and wide, even if a part of your room is overthrown, <clears throat> you have three other corners to retreat to. <clears throat> Focus, concentrate, and retake what is rightfully yours. When you build something of size, scope, and worth, it's very hard to dismantle. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want you to think of your life like that. If you, <clears throat> okay, that cleared it up. If you build your big life, when these storms, they're going to come, you know, people are going to leave you, people are going to die, 
But when you have your happiness tank as full as you can keep it most of the time, this stuff doesn't knock you for a loop. As we speak, the United States of America is broke. It is. The country is broke. But due to the sheer size and influence and mad money schemes, 100 years from this day, you get this message, this country will still be in existence. Because it's so big. Actually, the United States of America actually fits that thing as too big to fail. It really is. And this is what happens when you build a kingdom on a large plane. Spending your time fighting over scrapes, uh, will, scraps will exhaust you and your resources. Pride is often the architect of such folly and poor choice. EA or emotional management is one thing we all need to learn how to employ to a better degree. Understand you will be hurt. You will experience pain. These are honest and real emotions to an event that leaves you adversely impacted. Feel the emotion. Own it. Then set a time and date that you begin to move through the pain. This will take courage and often a supreme effort. Once you go through this process a few times, you will find strength stirred in places you never felt before. You will become stronger from the pain only if you choose to become stronger. Otherwise, it will consume you and drive you mad. Taking the pain and turning it into positive fuel for the, your battles of life is an emotional alchemy. Strip the bitterness out of it, wash away the misery, channel the energy into a new day. This is a choice, not something that happens. Uh, there's, there's more, but that'll be in the book because uh, I'm going to finish that up soon. David, the news with the pressure ass. Check the where to turn it off. <laughs> this is true. All right. It is five o'clock. I want to say uh, thanks, everyone. Oops. Before I get out of here, let's go here because everyone's like, how do I sign up for these things? Uh, the email is at the bottom of the email. I need to probably put it up at the top. But if you want to sign up for it, if you don't have the free audiobook, get it. If you want to immediate access, because I have a Facebook group, I have to add you. It takes two to 24 hours. But if you want immediate access, there's 17 days here. And then you want lifetime, which is the best deal right now because I'm going to raise the price. So it's 99 bucks a month or 300 bucks lifetime access. You do the math. And that's it. It's under every video. So if you want to sign up, just go for it. Okay, cool. That's all the questions. So I want to say uh, thanks for everyone that came out. And uh, I will see you on the good side. I'll be here tomorrow, 4 p.m. The organizer has ended the session and this call.